and welcome to the International Desk. I'm Hannah Vaughan-Jones in London. Donald Trump is lashing out after a sweeping judgment against his travel ban. On Thursday night, a US appeals court refused to reinstate the ban on seven Muslim-majority countries. Well, Mr Trump quickly uh, hit back on Twitter, typing in all caps, See you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. And again on Friday, calling the decision a disgrace. Well, the judges themselves ruled there was no evidence anyone from the seven banned countries committed a terror attack in the US. The court disagreed with the government's claim that presidential power supersedes any court review of the executive order. Let's get some perspective now on this legal battle. And we're joined by uh, CNN's legal analyst, Laura Coates, who's in uh, Washington now. So, Laura, where does he go now? We're hearing that he said that nothing's off the table. But if he goes back to the, the drawing board, as it were, it kind of implies that he, he lost. And we know that this is a president not well known for taking defeat. Well, it also implies that he was wrong, which he's also not very accustomed to admitting. You know, well, he has several options. One of them could be to appeal directly to the Supreme Court of the United States. The other one would be to do what's called an en banc, which means you could ask more of the Ninth Circuit judges to, re to weigh in and figure out what their opinions would be. But either way, ultimately, this case is going to go back to the original Seattle District Court judge to figure out what, you know, um, to actually decide the merits of the case. Remember, this is a unique sort of situation. The, see, the court has only ruled not on the constitutionality, not on the merits of the case, but to say, tell us why you would like us to reinstate the ban. And in order for us to evaluate your, your suggestion that we reinstate the ban, tell us why going back to the pre-travel ban status quo, where we had vetting measures already in place to deal with these seven countries, why was that not sufficient? Why did we need more? And in response, the Department of Justice did not have a response. They did not have any tangible information to share with the court, classified or otherwise, which would suggest that going back to that original vetting procedure would hurt the United States. Yeah, I mean, it begs the question, doesn't it, that if this intelligence does exist, then why didn't the government then reveal that to the court in order for this uh, travel ban, which we're told is so necessary and, and, and urgent, uh, why wasn't it upheld and, and put back in place? I mean, effectively, Donald Trump's in a position that if he goes back to the appeals court again, it means that the travel ban's not going to be in place, and therefore he is potentially putting the country at risk, in his own words. Right. Well, he views it that the judges themselves, by not reinstating the ban, are the reason for any perceived threat to the United States or any ones that may be forthcoming, unfortunately. That's not accurate, right? The idea that the judiciary would be at fault for any type of national security violations or breaches or concerns is very in unfair to our system of democracy, where we have three co-equal branches of government. But most importantly here, the, the judge essentially said to him, look, welcome to democracy. Unlike being the CEO, of a major corporation or many corporations, you actually have to get your, your power checked by the different branches. And the judiciary said, we can not only review your executive orders, we review them to make sure they, they actually comply with the Constitution. And they've done it in many um, past instances. For example, when Americans interned Japanese Americans uh, or when they denied passports to communists or elected successive communists, they've done it in the past and they will continue to ensure that the orders that are brought down by the President of the United States comply with our constitutional bedrock principles of fairness and no discrimination. Laura, just put this into a broader context for us, if you will, this, this legal challenge over the travel ban. What does this mean in terms of the Supreme Court and the fact that they are one short of a full court at the moment? Well, the fact that we have, you know, eight justices always leaves us vulnerable to having a split. And when you have an equal split, four, four decisions in the Supreme Court, what it does is allow the most recent decision from the lower circuit court to become the law of the land. For example, if the Ninth Circuit, since they have already ruled that they will not reinstate the ban pending a full trial below to figure out what the motivation behind the ban was, etc. Since that ruling is now in order, if they appeal to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court says and finds four to four that they cannot agree on what should happen next, then guess what? The Ninth Circuit's decision remains. That's a very big strategic risk for Donald Trump to take because he has to essentially be willing to accept the fact that this damning order from the Ninth Circuit could be the law of the land. And just finally, Laura, how long could this take to, to play out, this, this legal wrangling between the executive and the judiciary? 
Well, we'd all love to answer that question. We'd like it to end <laughs> soon. But unfortunately, we don't even have a ninth justice who has had his confirmation hearings take place yet. This could be, you know, several more months taking place. But if they were to appeal to the Supreme Court, we have a funny system where there are nine justices and nine circuit courts. One justice from the Supreme Court can look at this matter on an emergency basis and say, let me refer it to the whole general court. If we decide we have to intervene right now, we can take very prompt and swift action. But that's not likely going to happen in a quick method method because, of course, they don't have much to go on. They don't have enough information to, to say that this is an unconstitutional measure. They have some indication from the Ninth Circuit, but they need a full hearing below, and we just don't have that. This will take a while. Okay, another busy day for you, uh, Laura Coates, live for us there in Washington. Laura, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.